Today we are talking about Jason Nash, yes, David Dobrik's right-hand man. In the golden age of YouTube, we were blessed every single week with content from the vlog squad. And how else could David post these beautiful vlogs without Jason Nash right next to him wiping his little baby butt? Yeah, I said it. Without Jason, there is no vlog squad. So when baby Davey got spanked by that cancellation after trying to kill that weird friend of his, I knew that if anyone was to come out on the other side as an even bigger influencer, it would have to be Jason the Nash. Come on, guys. You all know what I'm talking about. Every friend group has that guy who's 30 years older than everyone else and refuses to act his own goddamn age. Come on. Now, regardless of the constant jokes that are made about this poor dad, we can all agree that Jason has made his mark in the internet history books. Every Batman needs his Robin. Every Sherlock needs his Watson. And every baby-faced, giggly vlogger needs his Jason Nash. What happens when a bunch of super popular internet bros lose their alpha lead? Leader. Well, some of them might try other forms of art, maybe like Scotty Sire with his music career. Girl, I know he ain't shit, still want him though. Men are trash, and maybe you're a raccoon. <laughs> Every boy you have some of them continue to make vlogs on their own to relive the glory days. Some of them start podcasts, like apparently a lot of them. Apparently everyone that was in the vlog squad has, has a podcast now. That's just one of the rules, I guess. But for Jason Nash, he decided to take a different route. And that route is begging people on the internet for money. Let's go! Now trying to go for 50,000. We need 10,000 points for doubles, guys. Holy shit. Let's fucking go, Mike. Thank you so much. Guys, are you seeing this? Everybody shout out Mike in the chat. Mike with the galley! John 55, I love you, dog. Internet panhandling, cyber begging, call it whatever you will, but Jason Nash has taken the interesting career pivot of going on TikTok Live every single day for hours a day battling Gen Z TikTok influencers for digital gifts that convert into real life currency. I'm sitting over here thinking that Jason needs to find some digital gifts that convert into real life friends. Preferably ones that are his own goddamn age. Scythe! Scythe! A7! Need it bigger! AKS! Yeah! People! Damn. Thank you, Sarah, for trying. Jason is literally spending hours a day asking TikTok users who are most certainly children to send him ice creams or cowboy hats or rainbows so he can win some random TikTok battle against some teen heartthrob who I've never seen or heard of before. 13, 14, no, bro, 15. it's like 19. You're not counting. Okay, okay. All right, we believe you. Amir, Angel's here. What up with the ICU? Guys, Jason's going for 100 push-ups because he just lost the battle of the century. Now, in a post-David Dobrik cancellation world, it's been quite the rocky journey for Jason. And I don't really blame him. You know, your entire life, the network of friends you have, the money you make, the places you go, they all revolve around being a part of this community. And there's nothing really inherently wrong with that. But when the core of that community crumbles, you're just left with crumbs. Little influencer-shaped crumbs. But Jason Nash is an entertainer. Jason was born to make content. It runs in his blood. How else could you raise a whole ass family and still jump on TikTok Live on Thanksgiving Day instead of spending time with your kids? Ah! Oh! Yes, David Sanchez! Holy shit! Oh my god! Hack attack! Says gang gang! Three seconds left! That's a win for Nash Nation! I'm telling you guys, this man was made for content. So when someone like Jason Nash is lost at sea, they begin to scramble, looking for what's next. Jason tried to make more vlogs. He tried this talk show that went horribly. He tried to make a podcast. He tried and tried and tried. But no, we're in a world where Jason Nash does a podcast episode with the legend of Vine, Zach King, and it pulls 11,000 views. 11,000. He got 38,000 views on his podcast episode with Josh Peck. 
but at least he nailed almost 300,000 views when he did an episode introducing everyone to his 31-year-old fiance. So when I do see someone making an effort like Jason Nash does, I tend to give him some slack when it comes to the choices he makes about his career and how he plans to become relevant again in the entertainment industry. I mean, I genuinely can't imagine how scary it is knowing that all of your friends are going to grow up and become adults soon. So whatever Jason does next, I was convinced that I would let it slide. Until one day, I opened TikTok only to be greeted with a live stream by Jason Nash, a TikTok live. It's Brian. Yes, Brian. Yes, Brian. I don't want to get kicked out of here. This shit is fucking too live, my dude. It's too live. It's fucking too live. Oh my god. Oh my god. Brian Plastic VLA, my man, my man, my man, my man. And as you can see, Jason was yelling at the bottom of his lungs for his fans to send him more money, more gifts, so he could beat someone in a battle that holds zero consequences and will never be seen by anyone ever again. And Jason doesn't really do this for the millions of dobe heads that were obsessed with the vlogs and therefore obsessed with Jason. Jason literally does this for like 500 kids who are in their own little bedrooms on their own little phones getting their own little butts wiped. And trust me, once you see one of Jason's lives, you don't get to say no. And so in the past month, I have gone from thinking about Jason Nash zero times a day to every single time I open the app. And then I have friends of mine start telling me that they keep seeing Jason Nash on their TikToks. I start seeing more and more people angry about it on Reddit. Jason Nash begging for money on TikTok. Can we talk about Jason Nash e-panhandling on TikTok? Jason Nash is so embarrassing. A couple of weeks ago, I literally overheard a conversation in line at a Disneyland ride about how Jason Nash never gets off of TikTok Live. And if you're watching this, a lot of you have probably experienced the same horror. It's like that new dream scenario movie where Nicolas Cage shows up in everyone's dreams, except it's just Jason Nash and his face is just haunting me wherever I go and I want him to be gone badly. One time I opened TikTok to see Jason Nash on a four-person live in front of like 800 people where he was literally giving dating advice to 20-year-olds. Is it love at first sight? Like people say, oh, when you know, you know, uh, right? So like, or, or it's like it's a situation like other situations where it's like you have a perfect candidate and in the world that we live in right now, it's like, it's like the jokes write themselves. I can't even tell at this point if Jason actually enjoys talking to the people on the lives at all. He seems so bored every single time I see him on there. Lean in and listen closely to the way that Jason participates in this conversation. We were talking about this, a lot of people, and well, I'm 25, you're in the bracket somewhat. Matt's like my age. But if you, in our generation, it's you're so replaceable. You're one swipe away, someone else is coming, mm -hmm. right? So. I feel as though, and, and obviously a lot of other things could be depending on each person, right? But I think it's so hard to find somebody who does everything right. So, so in that regard, it's like not settle, but do you, but do you at least try to to figure out if you can like that person? Beans that you know exactly what you want, you know, like almost it's difficult to find type of thing. Mm. I was on I was on Spirit Airlines today, so my brain's a little foggy. What was the question? Does he even like doing this? I mean, maybe it's just the dopamine rush of like tens of dollars being sent to his TikTok bank account every time he wins some battle. But really, how much money could Jason be making on this goddamn app where he's getting enough money to pay his mortgage, to send his children to school, to buy his underage friends alcohol. Well, let's go back to that clip I was watching before and see just how many points Jason Nash racks up in this nail-biting game in front of 200 people. 48,000 points. Whoa, that's a big number. You're, talking, you're telling me you got 48,000 points? What the hell? How big even is that? Now, to be honest, I did do some mild research trying to get a number on how much 48,000 points would even be, but they have TikTok coins and then they transfer into diamonds and then they have battles with the points that you get with gifts 
you give gifts from it and then you get the points from those gifts. I have no idea how much money he could be possibly making from 200 people watching him on a TikTok live, but I can confidently say that his paychecks are not the same as they used to be. And truly, struggling with your career as a father who has mouths to feed, I do not envy this feeling to grasp on to whatever he can at this point to hold on to some sort of relevancy in the public eye. But is begging for money on TikTok a justifiable career decision for Jason Nash? This is kind of the focus around why I made this video in the first place. To answer this question, is digital panhandling to people on TikTok okay? More specifically, is it okay for someone in Jason Nash's position? Maybe for a struggling part-time worker who found an audience on TikTok and who wants to make ends meet, but when it's someone like Jason who has the opportunity to make content that isn't just basically directly asking people for donations, I feel like any other option would be better than this. He can make content on YouTube for AdSense, get brand deals, post on Snapchat, even post to TikTok and make revenue off of the ads there. That's respectable enough. But every day for hours and hours, asking people poorer than you for digital gifts in exchange for absolutely nothing is sad and embarrassing. But then again, what do I know? Maybe Jason's really struggling since he stopped working with David and this is the only way for him to make his mortgage payments, I guess. And honestly, there really isn't that much wrong with going on TikTok live in general. You know, maybe he likes the real-time interaction he gets with a few of his fans. Maybe he enjoys the conversations he has with other influencers. I mean, I think all of that is okay but it starts to become suspicious when it is obvious that the main focus of Jason participating in these live streams is for him to make money from his viewers. There is no other reason why a grown ass fatherly man would do this publicly without any shame. I work, do you ever feel like a plastic bag chasing in the wind, wanting to start again? Do you ever feel how very, very thing? Six feet under and you know I'm known I'm here to see The lightning bolt is there for you And it's starting you And you just gotta ignore the right line Another time I go on TikTok and Jason is midway through a conversation he's having with another young influencer about how much time they both spend on TikTok Live and as you watch this clip, you can tell that Jason doesn't really relate much to what this TikToker is saying when he explains how he doesn't like to spend every second of his life on TikTok Live. Life, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I like to be with like my family. I like to, I don't know. I, I don't like to be on for like 10 hours a day, even on this. Like, I like to be as entertaining and give as much as I possibly can for like four hours a day, right. which is still a long time. But I feel like quantity over quality. No, quality over quantity for sure, for me at least. I mean, everyone has different vibes but i'm definitely a quality recording guy i like to be like my best self and just like be on and be off and if, I, and if i'm not feeling it i'll get off right i know he's having a hard time relating to this right now and honestly watching these videos gives me a second hand embarrassment or fear because i have a lot of insecurities around my content creation my job security and the thought of having to turn on the camera every day to ask for little gifts from my viewers is frightening to say the least. Just going from one of the most watched comedians on YouTube every day to someone who can barely afford their lifestyle is not fun at all, and I'm sure he does feel awful about this deep down, but he still continues to turn to begging children online for money instead of genuinely trying to make something that his audience wants to see. They don't go to Jason Nash's channel to watch Jason Nash. They go to Jason Nash's channel to see who Jason Nash knows. And when he loses the platform that people watch him the most on, everything else seems to fall apart. And it seems like even the people who used to work with see this, as you've got former peers of his like Alex Ernst indirectly making fun of just how insane his TikTok lives sound. I'm gonna be live on this all day today, guys. And Warner, let's go, yes! Send me another galaxy. Send me three uh, galaxy gifts, and I'll take my shirt off for three seconds, guys, come on. <laughs> Dark fantasy! And not only that, but the public perception of Jason from other people on the internet seems to be worse than most other influencers. I mean, I open Reddit to people just 
talking about how boring Jason is doing his own podcast without any of his friends. I saw a post about someone saying that they went to one of his stand-up shows and there was barely anybody there 30 minutes before he had to perform. It's hard not to look into the future as someone who makes content and fear becoming what Jason Nash has become. You know, Jason has always surrounded himself with whoever has made him relevant in the past. And when that goes away and he's isolated, it seems like the default becomes just begging for hours and hours on the internet for someone to pay attention to him and someone to give him some money. Jason Nash is wasting the last precious years of his long ass life asking for money so he can do what exactly? Pay someone to wipe his butt? And as I conclude this video, I guess I ask myself the question, do I feel bad for him for any of this? I mean, it is kind of mean for me to make this whole video clowning someone for something that I'm afraid that I'll have to do at some point in my life, right? I, I don't really know. But also, dude, you're begging people for fake stuff on an app made for children. And for that, I don't know how much I can back him up on this one. I would say that Jason Nash should sell his home in Los Angeles and maybe do something else. But I guess that's all I got to say on the matter for this week. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you did, I'm going to be posting basically once a week for the near future on this channel, I think. It's kind of up in the air. I'm working on a new show that's going to come out around the end of January, and I really want to focus my creative endeavors on that. So I'll still be here for topics that I want to talk about, but if you want to see more of me, he said us last week, I just posted a video and also gave a long update on the future of my content and how I feel about what I make and where I want to go with that. A really deep talk. And I make fun of some TikTok drama. So if you want to check those things out and watch me yap for 45 minutes, you can go to my channel, He Said Us. If you want to see my band, Queef Jerky, we are making new music. We came out with a new song called Liver, and we have more on the way. I urge you to listen to it. It's my favorite song we've made yet. Um, yeah, I mean, you might see a little bit less of me in the next couple months, but I think a lot of fun stuff is on the way, and I'm excited for what the future of YouTube holds in this next year. And with that, thank you for watching this video interact with it in some way if you liked it i hope i can make more videos like this if people like it um and that's all i gotta say thanks bye